All right. <clears throat> we are live. Hey, hello, welcome hello, everybody. Ata hello. here from Spring GR, and I'm here with a couple amazing folks. We are hello, live everybody. to talk to you guys about, have just a candid conversation about what's happening this week. We'll give some time for folks to get on here. Excellent. Excellent. Ata, have you done any more TikToks yet? I have not. We will have we will have some coming coming this weekend. That's good. Excited. Girls got yeah. more dances planned for you, Ata. Your girls. They, they got they got too many planned. They got too many planned. <laughs> so we'll see we'll see which ones I'm able to, to actually like do. <clears throat> we're supposed to we were supposed to do one last week, and then uh, I don't know what happened. It didn't end up happening. So. <clears throat> we need to do a, a, a TikTok with Spring GR. We need Spring to GR TikTok. I, I'm with yeah. you. I think Dia Andre wants to. Just video. Oh yeah. Hey, do we have anybody uh, anybody uh, watching yet? I see. I see. There's four people on watching right now. <laughs> All right. Um, I know Chris Mathis should be getting on here pretty soon as well. He's going to be joining us to share some things. <laughs> if you're watching, give us uh, give us a little hello in the, in the comment box. Let us know you're watching. Hi, Nancy. Well, hi, Nancy. <laughs> <clears throat> What's up, Raquel? Hey, Raquel? My Eric, you so do a little bit of traveling uh, for for your work. Where's uh, where are some of the places that you've traveled to recently? Recently, uh, I was in South Korea actually in January for 15 days. Uh, and it was right before everything really popped off, maybe about two weeks before everything started to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but so uh, South Korea earlier this year, then I was in Dubai um, in December, uh, and that's international. Then also Columbia, like a few months before that. But then Austin, Texas and Dallas, Texas, we were just in last week. Uh, okay. So it's been a, a wide range of stuff, but all of it has been put on pause because of everything going on here. Uh, and earlier on, even with stuff starting, I thought maybe it would just really be our industry that was affected heavy because there was so much travel, so many events that were getting postponed. But then I saw how now it's affecting everybody. But more recently, um, Austin, Texas and Dallas. And then before that, uh, South Korea. We were all across South Korea um, from uh, Seoul to Busan. We were there with Calvin College's Gospel Choir doing some vlog day-to-day uh, -day recap stuff for them. And it was really fun. I definitely enjoy the travel aspect because we just take what we're doing here locally, but then are able to do it in these other markets and locations. Awesome. Hey, the man's repping the Spring DR as well. <laughs> Only way to go. Only way. <laughs> Got to. Good to see y'all, man. What's up, Chris? Oh, man. These are good, man. Helping people. Being home all day with the kids, no complaints. Are you guys doing any TikToks? You know, my daughter is six and she just told me about TikTok for the first time the other day. I have <laughs> never heard of TikTok till like two days ago. <laughs> no, it's growing. It's growing. <laughs> I have to look into it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It'll suck you in, man. You'll be stuck on there for two hours. <laughs> Yeah, she told me she wants a TikTok page. I said, really? <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> so What's up, Nancy? We're, we're, we're kind of getting things rolling here. Um, I don't know, I guess just for starters, I guess we'll either Eric or Chris, just anything that you want to just share initially before we jump too far into the marketing piece. Um, just anything yeah. on your mind as far as, I guess for now, I guess when we normally started this way. Why don't you just share A, how this is affecting your business um, and what it's causing you to do just in the general sense. I'm going to start with you, Eric. That's really okay. Good yeah. For, for us, like I was saying a little bit on that travel side of things in the last year, that's really been how we've defined 
um, who Carbon Stories is, uh, just us being able to travel more, us being able to uh, do the work that we were doing locally more on an international scale. And so now that all of that's been paused, uh, it's always, it kind of felt like more recently, we're always working up until that next time we travel. So since that's put on pause, it's really put us in this place to where we are focusing a lot more on what's happening here in Grand Rapids, focusing on what's happening locally. Um, but again, on the initial response, we weren't sure which industries were going to be affected. We do so much in the construction field that that was continuing to go on. So we thought maybe, OK, we'll just keep doing a lot of our construction work or maybe there are some other construction contacts we'll reach out to. But then everything got put on pause. Uh, and so now we've kind of been handling it day by day. But we've got a few clients who are considered essential, like Fox Motors. Uh, they do automobile fixing of cars. And so we have to do an update video for them. And then there's a few things like having to go shoot the governor last night for one of our clients who were participating in bringing the beds to GVSU. So there's some things that are popping up here and there. Um, but also a lot of our creators have uh, YouTube channels or just personal content that they're able to post about. So that's really what that shift has been more recently. Like I know this week, uh, we have eight people total and i think it's five of us that have youtube channels and i know all five have been working on creating stuff for their own social media channels their own uh expression of like what is going on uh, but then also like immediately when it did happen we were trying to figure out what were the ways that we could help give back and support during this time uh, of course the first thought was doing it financially and so kids food basket there were a few people doing some donations so we donated through some of those channels and then also even like a madcap they started a gofundme page and them being not only a client, but also a lot of the baristas that were working, they're great friends of ours. We just wanted to make sure we supported. it. Uh, but we also knew that we were gonna have a financial hit. So that couldn't be the only way that we gave back and supported. So then we decided to do the creative consulting for free. Um, and it's been really cool just being able to hear about all these different other businesses that um, are trying to continue to push forward during this time. All of the calls, of course, like we've been talking through with people, okay, what is the bad side of things? But at the end of the call, they've been about 30 minutes, we get to their point where people are saying, you know, there is more I can be doing right now. There is stuff that I could be working on to where it doesn't just feel like you're stuck in the house and everything has to be put on hold. Uh, and I know for the business too, that's something that before we weren't doing as much on purpose. We weren't really marketing the fact that we can do creative consulting. It's really been clients coming to us asking for it. Uh, but, and then sometimes we charge, sometimes we would just do it at no charge. But now doing it on purpose, uh, we've talked to about seven different businesses, some locally, one business in Wales that we got connected to from a project last year that we're going to be doing a call with on it. So, um, so far, like at Carbon, it's, it's really affected, again, our day-to-day -day operations. I'm the only one in the office this week. Uh, everybody else is working from home, but our mindset is, okay, this is a time for us to hone in on our skills, work on, again, some of our personal uh, expressions of the things, whether it be our YouTube channels or our other businesses that we're working on, uh, but then also overall how we can just help people and provide value during this time. Chris, is there anything that you'd add anything um, from your perspective of uh, the, the things that you run? I think, first off, Eric, good stuff, bro. I mean, sounds amazing. And I commend you for all the work that you're doing and to continue to stay busy and, and relevant. Um, the you. things that I would add to that as far as what we're doing differently in a couple different lanes, obviously coaching is taking a small hit because um, it's slowing down a little bit as far as what I can do as far as travel goes. So obviously everything now is being moved over to video. So that's how we're able to supplement some of that. Um, I would say for me, the biggest hit has probably come around raise a glass wine tours and what we do there. Obviously, with all the restaurants and locations being closed, there's nothing that we can do as far as uh, transporting our customers, serving food, wine, none of those things. So the way we have pivoted from that is if this really does last only three weeks or so, we've taken that three weeks to just really, really get good at just engaging with our guests, engaging with our audiences through social media. Um, everybody's stuck at home. No one's really going anywhere. So we're really, really just making that a big part of our focus there. Um, and then the other part, like Eric mentioned as well, is just giving free content. This is my second video in two days. So it's now about how do I just give free content to all the other businesses who may not have the ability to think out of the box, you know, without bouncing ideas with another entrepreneur. Here's a way for them to now connect and get some brainstorming ideas and other ways that they can then support. And then, of course, I'm taking phone calls, messages, emails, Facebook messages, so on, um, to help those entrepreneurs bounce ideas and get creative with their restaurants and so on to how to stay relevant, you know, over the next month as we all figure this out together. Awesome. So. Um, real quick, there, there's a question that's that's on the board right now. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about support for small businesses, 
that are able to do business right now. Can you elaborate on that? Um, great question, Faye, and thanks for asking that. There are a few things that are out there. Um, <clears throat> there's been a lot of changes, obviously, with uh, for for businesses that have employees. They've expanded the unemployment, so employees are more employees are able to apply for unemployment to help cover that. As far as businesses are concerned, there's there's different loan programs that are being opened up for businesses. Um, the SBA has a <clears throat> a disaster relief loan. I wait for that truck to go by. Has a, a disaster relief loan that they've opened up for small businesses that they actually just waived the um, credit requirements, so people won't be denied now because of credit. And then if you do get that loan, you can defer it for up to twelve months. So that's one that's out there. Um, Kiva, Kiva is another one. Kiva does zero uh, percent loans. They've expanded their um, require or yeah, they've loosened the requirements for the loans that you can get with them. It's a crowdsourced lending platform. Um, so these are all things that you could look into. There are more things that people are working on, and as we hear about those things, we'll be sure to let you guys in and know how you guys can tap it. I love that. Um, were you gonna say something, Eric? Oh yeah, well, uh, earlier just it kind of goes into what Ata was just talking about, but one of those things I did want to make sure I touched on was just the affirming uh, to entrepreneurs and people who are in business or creatives uh, or people who are really taking the, the hit in the side of uh, their business relies on them being able to be open and being at a physical location. Just knowing that this is something that is affecting everybody, so you're not alone in this. Again, if it was something where some industries were hit harder or some people were hit harder, then definitely you would kind of feel like you're on an island, but know that you're not. Um, but then also with that, know that out of these times are when new solutions and new things are developed. I mean, even looking at how we're able to do this event right now with us being in four different locations, that's something that not only before was it not really needed, we just weren't even looking at trying to do that. But now Spring GR can continue this on even after quarantine in a way that there's more consistent value that can be provided um, from people who may not be in the same physical location. So just as an entrepreneur, as a problem solver, as a creative thinker, try to be thinking through those things as you are at home. And then again, know that you're not alone. And then I'll also just touch shortly on that the finance side of things don't get me wrong like we even have taken a financial hit where i've got to make sure that we have all of our bills paid and doing exactly what we can do on the financial side but i also know that this is a good time for me to make sure that carbon stories and even eric lachey has the value that i say i provide actually together since we say it's photo video graphic design work that we do really well I need to be making sure that that is what we do. Looking back at these process documents that don't take money for me to do. That's just my time. That's just me looking at, okay, the business plan or any handbooks, anything that I've created and saying, okay, am I doing exactly what we say we actually do? Uh, because after all of this, every single last field is going to have to have that demand again. And so I wanna make sure that when our creators are back in the office, when our clients are back in business working, we're doing it even better than we were before actually being a video photography graphic design company the best way we can. So for whatever field it is that you're doing, uh, work on that side of stuff if you can't because you know the finances aren't there. I think that's an excellent, excellent uh, advice because we always, um, it's really difficult to find a time when you're working and you're meeting with your customers and you're doing the sales and the day-to-day -day is really demanding, it's incredibly difficult to work on your business. So this is a great opportunity to, to work on your business, to get those processes down, to talk to a mentor or somebody else or work with one of your colleagues on making it more efficient and just really making sure that that's nailed down. What I, I kind of want to go back to something that we, we were thinking about um, as we were thinking about this meeting. Um, Real quick, now everybody's able to um, to make sales right now, and they, but they still need to connect with their customers. Um, it's and um, they might be thinking of new ways to do things. They might be working on the back end. But what would you say to those those companies that there may not be a very clear way to drive up a new revenue stream during this time, or think uh, something without completely changing their business? What would you say about um, their need to connect with with customers and their vendors right now? You want to go first, Eric? You can go right ahead. <laughs> I, I'm going to say social media is the answer. I mean, everyone's home. No one's going anywhere. I mean, you should be a social media monster for the next three weeks of consistently sharing content, pictures of your meals from your restaurant, um, pictures of, you know, before and after shots at your salon, whatever the case may be. And just constantly putting out content to engage people, and uh, that that's one way that's going to keep you relevant. Um, and, and to this all, 
passes over. But to not do anything or to start cutting marketing budgets and all those things, you're only going to do yourself a disservice because when this all passes over, you're going to feel the effects of not being relevant for that three weeks to a month when the market does start to bounce back. So in my opinion, this is a time now where we don't pull back those budgets. You may need to tweak them a little bit based on the business that you're in. But right now is a time that we really need to be diving even deeper into the way we market. Uh, knowing that we know exactly where to find everyone at right now, which is sitting at home, looking for something to do and new ways to engage as they pass the time as well, like all of us. Absolutely love that. I just want to, I'll piggyback off of that and just say with the social media side of things, if you're unsure, you know, after you've posted, after you've done what you needed for the day to share some information, Go to your previous customers. Maybe it was a year ago they participated in your service. Maybe it was a week ago or two weeks ago before everything that they purchased your product and reach out to them. Just thank them. It doesn't take any talent. It doesn't take any skill to say thank you and be grateful for that person participating in whatever it is that you were doing. And then on top of that, if it is something where there's that uh, conversation started, you could also ask them what are things that they think they should that you should be doing in order to better your product or to better your service. Of course, depending on how many customers you have, it's not something where you're doing it with all of them, but maybe it's just one of them a week that you're engaging with. Check up in on check in on them, see if there's anything that they're in need of because after all of this, that's what's gonna stand out to them. They're gonna say who was still talking to me during this thing. And again, even that relationship can now be built stronger because of something I like everybody having to be at home in front of their phones uh, happening. I'll, I'll add one more piece to that as well and say that this is also a good time now to think about innovation. You know, how can we think about how do we innovate what you do? Because um, th the truth of it is, I think we're going to see a shift in how people do business after this is over. We're seeing more and more companies have staff and employees work from home. Don't be surprised if that becomes a part of the new trend as we go forward when they realize how much money they can save by not having a big building anymore and having all their staff work from home in this capacity. As that happens, new ideas will be born from that. And some of those new ideas that are born from that could become new pieces or branches or legs as far as what you currently do in your business. It can become that new innovative piece that you add on that then takes it to that next level. One, what, real quick, um, thank you guys for, for, for those points. You know, I think one of the points I'll add to that in terms of your marketing, as you think about that, think about it from the perspective of your customer as well. Because it's very easy as you start to market and all you're focused on is thinking about how you can bring dollars back in in the future. It's very easy to then neglect where your customer is at right now. Mm -hmm. And this is a crisis for everybody. So how do you create a message that meets your customer where they are, understanding that this is this is stressful or this is a crisis for them and creating a message that then also says i'm also here for you um as a customer but there's there's a question that's been put on the board that i'd love you guys to answer maybe you need a second to think about it maybe you can answer it right now but it's showing right there what's the biggest lesson you've learned during this transition and how do you apply it to your business moving forward oh man i i got a quick one for that <laughs> got a quick one you said yeah man i got an answer for that fast and so my my biggest uh i would say one of the biggest lessons that i've learned is i was really really busy before doing things and i have never really enjoyed doing video so i always use being busy as my excuse as to why i don't share more content online by way of video then i saw a video from gary v the other day talking about if you're thinking about it stop thinking about it and just do it and then i no longer have the excuse anymore of time and being busy because now all i've got is time sitting at home with my kids so now it's forcing me to figure out ways of coming out of my comfort zone investing in new content which then helps me further share my message with new people but also helps me further the business at the exact same time and so i am now taking advantage of that opportunity to further things and reach more people share content and, and so on um but this is that was probably one of the biggest lessons i've learned in the last two weeks is just really getting out of my comfort zone thank you eric yeah, I would say the video conferencing calls, this type of thing. Again, I, I wasn't really on anything live with a group of people before at all, but this is like my third time doing it this week. Uh, and then also even just people who I normally would only see face to face or we may do a phone call. Uh, in the past, like we were using Zoom for some of our clients that would reach out and ask for us to do a project. And if we couldn't physically be there, we might Zoom call with them, but it was usually them initiating it. It was rare that we would start a Zoom call. We always would just say, oh, let's do a phone call or let's do it in person as much as we can. 
But after this week, I'm seeing the impact, even again, just a response like an event like this. And I'm saying this needs to happen more. And I know that it can be implemented uh, in a different way to where like now there's access for more people to be able to uh, uh, be impacted by whatever value it is that you're providing. I know of a few churches that are just now doing live stream because they have to at this point where for them, like they've got their value that they provide. They now get to broadcast that. And instead of their building only able to hold 250 people now, however many people can be in a live stream have access to that. So I think there's just a, a greater amount of access to stuff and the importance of these virtual events mm -hmm. uh, and them being able to be impacted. And honestly, it almost gets more um, potent, has a more focused group because it's people who are interested in it, the questions that you're getting, the things. It's not, you know, a, a group of people who don't want to be here. It's like they, they are watching the video and they're paying attention. So um, I really much like uh, this whole video conferencing aspect that has been happening because before it wasn't. One thing, good. Um, one thing that uh, I'll share that came up in a conference call was being able to look look again at your insurance coverage. So there's a lot of businesses, you know, there's business interruption insurance that people could get that being able, being in this crisis now could have been um, covered by some insurance claims. Um, so being able to go back and actually look at what are the things you, you need coverage for? Because usually when you start a business, you just go and you get the bare minimum insurance that you need. Mm -hmm. But when the crisis like this hits, it allows you to go back and looking at, at your insurance coverage and see where are there other things I should add in because that an extra addition might just be another couple hundred dollars a year that creates some 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 income for, for something like this. Um, I want to highlight a comment that Tara made. Tara is a co-owner of Daddy Pete's Barbecue. They are still open and taking orders. So if you are hungry and need some barbecue, definitely patronize them. But one thing he said is we ask customers how we can help them and, and post it on our post it or DM us because we're all in this together. So being able to show support for the customer base, I think it's awesome. Absolutely. I like it. I think yeah. um, I think all that's really good. I'd like to highlight a, a, the comment that Kimona made. Um, she says, it's a full-time event coordinator. All my business income has come to a hard stop two weeks ago. I feel insensitive posting the core partners right now. All my clients are super stressed and Lord knows I am also. How can how can people that want to and business owners that want to address and engage their customers, which they need to do to stay engaged, so they don't go, um, they don't go radio silent. Um, how can they communicate with their customers in a way that's meaningful, authentic, and doesn't sound like crisis opportunism? Hmm. I would say one, you're almost, I feel obligated at least to be posting because I don't post about COVID-19 often. There may be a few things that you can see on my feed that I'll post about, but it's just me doing consistently what I was doing before all of this happened or not. So it's almost like you want people to be able to get their mind off of it a little bit because of course, like earlier in the week, it was the bigger blow and we don't know how long this is going to go, but I think there's enough <clears throat> people out there posting about the, the issue side of things. And there's enough people out there posting the knowledge side of, hey, check out this article or whatever that's written that I would almost say the businesses that do have content and do know how to post not about COVID-19, feel free to go ahead and do that. Now, don't be selling though. I don't think that even when it comes to your posting strategy in general, it shouldn't be every post you're doing saying, hey, come buy this, hey, come buy this, but just share your value. Talk about some of the past events that you've done and what stood out to you in those events. People who participated in that event may end up commenting and say, wow, this was a really good times. Like memories, shared experiences, that relationship all helps people get through what's happening right now. Because honestly, you don't want it to be to where people are consistently just thinking about it. You want people to forget about it for a little bit, you know? just because we still have to live we shouldn't be living in fear this entire time so i would say on the insensitive side it's it's not if you have good intentions when you're posting don't always be posting on the actual side of okay can i get a sale from this just be posting some value something that looks cool that someone might participate in um and then i'll also just say um maybe posting some questions on asking people how you could help with virtual events that are going on now because this is small based on it just being a call but this is considered a virtual event what is a way that virtual events will need event coordination because people still want to get the experience across people still want to get their ideas there they want to leave a, a meaningful impact they don't want it to just be the same old same old how can you as an event coordinator help with these digital events that are being created um, but then also, yeah, don't feel bad posting stuff that's not about COVID-19 because people need that. They need a little escape. 
I just make sure it's value that's being provided. I want to, I want to, I want to add to that a little bit too. Um, it sounds like Chris, you want to add some also. Oh no, and go ahead. That, that you know what? There's going to be a lot of people that have maintained their jobs. It's been a difficult time, but their salaries have still been coming in. Um, my family is one of those examples, and I know a lot of other people are too. But they're still going to get a check. That means they're going to have extra money to spend and business is down right now and they're going to want to jump back into the market. They're going to want to support local businesses. So you're going to want to stay top of mind. I'm going to want to know where you are because that's exactly what I want to do with my money. I want to make sure it gets into the right hands that need it the most and I want to be uh, very meaningful with it. So if, I, if, uh, if you're not posting and you're not letting me know the value that you bring to the market, you kind of know where to spend that money. So. Um, just stay top of mind for people that are ready to go um, get back into the market once uh, once all the restrictions lift. That's good. Okay. Chris, it sounded like you wanted to jump in with something or, or a topic. Uh, no, I'm, I'm supporting what you said. I'm, I'm in 100 percent agreement. No, we, I see that we have our, our, one of our other guests here now. Uh, Corey. Corey Hart is with Startup Grind. Um, thank you for joining us today, Corey. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know if you want to say a little bit about you real quick. Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, Corey Hart is the name. Uh, I'm here um, uh, with the Startup Grind. We're an international uh, group uh, with chapters all over the world uh, filled with uh, entrepreneurs uh, of all walks of life. And um, and I'm really excited to bring that to this vision. It's a very new group. I uh, just try to uh, connect folks and uh, get that sort of capital going. Um, and uh, really grateful just to plug in and help uh, push you There you go. Hey, Corey, your your mic is a little bit um, a little bit soft. I don't know if you could lean a little bit closer, but I um, also want to say with uh, with Corey, just like Eric here is a stellar businessman and has um, a lot of years out in uh, California in a variety of industries. So um, if you've got any questions about connecting with customers and about different industries, um, he's also good person to ask on this call as are Chris and Eric so getting the head getting the headpiece together <laughs> definitely, definitely something we all need I saw Chris do the same thing hey, yeah it's like hey Air <laughs> AirPods and, died right see, when I got on you see, you see, you see Kimono that's that's one way that you can start thinking about these uh virtual events how can you help people be prepared for virtual events right <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, as much as that's like, that's serious because some people just have no clue what to think of. But yes, having the headphones, making sure your computer's charged, the natural lighting, maybe even taking uh, some examples of like pictures of what might not look good. Go into a dark room and show it just being the computer light and say, you know, if you're a part of a virtual event, this is not how your lighting should be. It's going to be harder for people to understand what you're communicating. Go to a well lit, natural lit, or whatever it might be, space, and say, okay, this is what your background should look like. Because some people, it is the first time uh, doing something. That's, stuff. And that's a great point. I think with that, I want to give a shout out to Nancy on our team. Um, before we got on this call, I was in a different room, and Nancy's like a tire echoey. You got to move. Paul, your lighting is dim. You got to fix that. So, you know, that's, that's awesome to have somebody that can kind of keep us in check. That's good. Absolutely love it. Hey, Corey, um, since you just jumped on and uh, Eric and Chris have uh, both had a chance to share a little bit about what they'd love entrepreneurs to know at this time. Um, just wondering if you have any words, if you had just a few minutes with an entrepreneur, what would you want them to do during a time when maybe their business is shut up and their, their customers are not allowed to visit them or maybe they're just struggling to uh, reach out to customers? What would you want an entrepreneur to know? Well, um, if for the risk of uh, repeating anything, but I think that's okay to repeat, I'd say yep. now is uh, lean into the opportunity that this presents. Um, it's an opportunity to really take stock in where your business is, where it has been, look back so that you can see what's happening now. Chances are, if you're not, if you're not shut down completely, you're at 90% uh, loss of uh, traffic. Um, if not that, then you're just, you're probably elated to have, uh, um, 80% drop. Um, but then this is an opportunity to move forward and look ahead. Um, there's so many really great tools out there by some incredible companies and agencies. Um, as soon as I can find out how to put, uh, some of these links in the chat, um, like price, uh, like waters, Cooper's PWC just, uh, put out, uh, like a really great tool to how to, how to analyze the position of your business 
and uh, look at the market today and how to plan for the next uh, six, eight months. Um, That's good. So, uh, but then it, you guys probably covered some stuff as far as like advertising and social media. There's no better time than to be transparent, and open with your customers, and such a great opportunity to to be to be walking alongside them. You know, not as like an alarmist kind of mode, but in a hey, this is my expertise. This is why you come to me already as a merchant. So how can I help you in your home with what you're dealing with? So that's what that's I got. Good. That's excellent. That's really good. To, to kind of piggyback on that, on the side of uh, just where people's time is going to go, the people who are looking at how can I refresh my processes, how can I implement some of these wisdom system tools, or even maybe going back to the drawing board on some things you're already using, we use Slack internally to communicate. Um, I know that it works well because I've looked at all of the other things, but this would be the time to figure out, okay, is Slack even the way that we should be communicating as a team? So then once everything uh, does start back up, even if it's a gradual thing, you can implement new systems that may help that end goal be done even better. Yeah, most of the, the companies out there have been moving to this uh, digital transformation um, as, as an operations thing for a while. And now all of a sudden, 88% of, of like the world's businesses are forced to be all digital. So mm -hmm. now we're not just trying it. Um, a lot of these things that we're doing, to your point, we're going uh, to be using after this is over. I told you. you. It's going to be better for it. We're going to be, we're going to be better for it. <laughs> I said the same thing earlier that I could see this becoming the new way. This will be no longer a trend anymore. This will be the standard of having everyone work from home in this capacity, cutting big costs on big businesses and so on. Yeah, and businesses are finding out that Slack is free. It's free. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep. Zoom is free. Like if it's not Zoom, then another one. Like it, yep. there's so much opportunity to to learn and hone and and work on your business. Absolutely. This comment from this again. Here. This comment from Destiny really stands out to me because uh, it just goes mm -hmm. on that piece of like you are building your company's narrative by her saying she doesn't have to offer a pickup option. Now, like she's still seeing her is saying her email rate is still doubling. Um, so that's like her saying, this is the way I want my customers to communicate to me during this time. And if she didn't do that, if she wasn't communicating that, then they would think, oh, I can come stop by and pick up stuff. You know, I could whatever way. But that's great that she's able to say, OK, this is what I'm going to communicate. And this is my process I'm going to set up for this time. This is how I want my customers to be able to reach out to me and uh, give it. I, I love that point, and I think too something that uh, Destiny has done that I think everybody should do is figure out how to uh, how to know how many emails are actually opened up, mm -hmm. and actually do that back end work and make a place so that she can actually measure that. And that's one of those great things that you can you can then know to lean into that aspect of your business even more. And if you didn't have that that analytic, uh, <laughs> thanks, Chris. If you have that analytic, you wouldn't even you wouldn't even know that you could. She wouldn't even know that she could lean into that more. So. I think that's an excellent way to just uh, work on your business now and make sure that you have those systems and processes in place. I think the other the other thing that the other thing to note of that is, as as we've mentioned on a, a couple calls before, is your business, as we keep saying, is a solution to a customer problem. The problem just changed significantly for the for the for the customer. So your job now as a business owner is to be creative to figure out how can I solve the problem for my customer. And one of the things that Destiny did was. She solved the problem of them not having to leave their house to come pick up her stuff. She's like, oh, that's a problem for them right now anyway. They're not supposed to be leaving their house. So here's what I'm going to do to fix that. And then also, I'm going to try to give them some humor in the middle of this crisis so that they want to come back for more as opposed to turning on CNN or Fox News or whatever outlet you watch and getting freaked out again. It's like, no, I can't wait to get another email from, from Destiny to brighten up my day. So I love that. And if that's not what your business, looking back at that area of value on should you be sharing stuff that isn't as informational, if that's not what your business is for, you don't need to feel obligated to do that. On Carbon Stories social media, we won't be sharing any COVID-19 uh, articles because that's not what people go to Carbon for. Now, we may share some what to do when creating content at home or what to do when creating content during quarantine because that's what we're good at. But I don't feel obligated to share a this is the number of how many people have uh, a corona in 
um, Michigan because that's not something anybody ever would come to me for because I'm not in the healthcare area. I'm not, that's not something that I'm even proficient in. I might be sharing the wrong article, uh, trying to update people. So uh, I'm going to stick to doing what I'm skilled at, where my value is, and same for every, every field. That's good. There was a question on there from uh, Bert, I think it was. What's the biggest project or goal and do you want all to that you want to accomplish during this time? Oh boy. Um, I'm going to, I'll, I'll speak on that. I'll say for me, um, it's not even necessarily about my business particular because I'm thankful that we were, <clears throat> everything I have has been structured in a way that we're, we're able to survive the times. If it's, you know, three weeks a month or even two months, we could survive it and be okay at the end of this and still bounce back. I think the biggest thing that I want to accomplish is really, really taking full advantage of my gift and sharing what I've learned in my experience in, in business with other entrepreneurs who may not have been prepared for hard times or who are who are just getting started. And it just so happens this come along and knock them off the bike. How can I help those entrepreneurs better understand and better learn um, so that the next time something like this happens, they know how to survive through the hard times. So it's really just about sharing that content and information as much as I can while I'm, uh, I've got the free time to do it. One thing, one thing that I'll share um, and my hope is as far as I'm speaking from the perspective of helping the businesses that are in this space is my hope is that each of you can figure out what that bounce back looks like. So say for example, Sunday, we get a message that says the all clear is up a week from Sunday, business is back to normal. Are you going to start running then? Or how do you start the run now? What does the That's plan of, of, of lead up look like for you? So that once we get the green light, you're not now taking three months to build your customer base back up. So once things open up, you can get right back into the flow of things. So how are you looking at your business from that perspective to say, yes, we're in a crisis now, but how am I planning and preparing myself to be ready once this thing is lifted, whenever that is? That's really good. Mm -hmm. I would piggyback that to say my goals have definitely changed as the laws and what is responsible has changed. Again, two weeks ago in the construction industry specifically, they were good. Some businesses had stopped doing some things, but construction kept going. Then construction paused, so that had to adjust our company. So we've gone from making sure creators are set to making sure that carbon is set, uh, but then also even personally making sure I'm taking this time to learn different things. So uh, whether it be posting consistently or, or whether it be uh, just making sure everything here the office is still together that we don't have a break in you know so that type of stuff i think is like incremental um and like changing as the time is going on which goal i decide to to pick up but once uh, that plan or that process is set in place i move on to the next thing uh, such as like what ataja said figuring out all right when stuff does come back uh what is the plan for that what is the next step i think uh for uh for me um I've, uh, I've, I've found this, uh, this to be a really great time and I have multiple clients. And so in each one of our businesses, we've, uh, we've taken this time to like reach out to our neighbors, the people that are in the same business. Um, because now more than ever, we're, we don't have this competitive mindset because we're, this has demo, we're all in the same boat. <laughs> and so we're able to have these really, really great candid conversations about, okay, well, how, like, what are you going through? And we've already been shifting some staff. Like one of our competitors is laid off 30% of their team, but another one of my clients, like we, we, we have places for them to go. So now is a better time than any to be collaborative uh, with one another, especially in the same industry. Um, so that's been really great. And then um, this has been a really great time to practice something that uh, I'm not always good at, but it's uh, like observe more and react less. <laughs> That's good. That's really good. I like that. I like Hashtag that. that right now. Yeah. Um, seriously. So one thing that I am going to throw out there is I'm seeing a lot of, or I'm hearing a lot of, and we're saying a lot of, you should be strategizing to prepare for, for, for um, when things change. Um, work on things that you haven't been able to work on. I saw Tara post something saying I'm working on learning skills that I haven't learned pro learned previously. I'm 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 guessing or I'm willing to bet that there's some people that know that, but they don't know practically what that looks like. How should I be strategizing? How should I be structuring? How should I what what skills should I be learning? And if you're in that boat, please reach out to us 
so we can help you think through this process of how should you be thinking to structure this? How should you be thinking to um, bounce back once this, like, what does that look like? So, um, you know, I think that's one of the, what's one of the practical pieces that people really need to look at that maybe you aren't able to, or not sure how to do that right now. I want to, I want to throw in there too, that if you're a spring GR graduate, um, the spring GR team that's available to help you out with that. I mean, we couldn't handle everybody if everybody came in at once, but we have a network of people that are available. Corey is one of them. Chris is a great coach. And um, we have got mentors and coaches that are available. So there's a whole bunch of people that are willing to, uh, that have a bunch of experience that are willing to sit down with you and help you think through what that looks like to, to set goals, to strategize about the future, and then help you implement that. Yeah, quick little nugget on where to start. Maybe figure out what in your business have you done a little bit of, but not been able to do a lot of, whether that be you're not skilled enough, whether that be you haven't gotten enough resources or exchange your value or paid enough to be able to do it and then try to figure out how you can get better at that. Again, for me, I would say it's definitely the consulting side. It's rare that we have had a project where we're just consulting, but I know that that exists out in the market. I know that there are some creative companies where all they do is consult and give people a plan. And so since now that's what I can focus on, I'm like doing it more and more. I uh, started out with just some people who were in my circle who I started to talk about what to do. Then now us providing it for free. And after all of this, there are going to be some people who continue to reach out to us. So um, figure out within the company what uh, task have you been doing or what uh, exchange of value has happened that you really liked and then want to do more of it, but just haven't had time to work on it. Mm -hmm. I'll add on to that and say, I would even say maybe take a step back and relook over your mission statement. <clears throat> As things are evolving and changing and all this innovation is coming in, does your mission still apply the same way it did before all of this? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is yes, then that's a good spot to start with of just reviewing that and then building yes. from there. If it's not, then we need to start by just revamping some of that mission first so that it now becomes relevant with the way you feel your business is going to have to shift and pivot because of the way that we're evolving as a country. So my suggestion would be a starting with that and then moving forward from there with the things that Eric and, and the time everyone else has suggested. So great point. Yeah, I can uh, add on to that. That's really great. Um, when we're looking at our business and we're, we're taking, taking stock of say some skills that I want to maybe upskill at or some holes in uh, some expertise on the team, uh, there's actually, it's kind of counterintuitive, but there's no better time than now to hire <laughs> or to look for help. Now you might not be Very able to pay them. Point. You might not be able to pay them, right? Of like what market was like six months ago, but things are different now. Like you might be willing to take on like a, a co-founder of some great area of expertise that you haven't even thought about adding for another five years. But now, wow. now you can bring on somebody with incredible expertise and experience and they're willing to put in the next six, eight, 12 months for free, not for free, but in exchange for equity and whatnot. So um, that's a, one thing to think about too. So much to think about, that's kind of so overwhelming. a great idea. <laughs> I love yeah. that idea. I may have to and take a look at that myself. <laughs> yeah, it made me, on our end, it made me think about industries. So I haven't been able to talk to some certain industry professionals just based on how busy they may have been. Um, but now it's making me think for places that we want to branch out and do more of, I should just reach out to them and, and have a phone call. Um, instead, it was like, hey, can we get coffee in the past? Now it's just like, hey, can we do a quick Zoom call when I introduce myself and, and learn more about what it is you're doing in the sports realm or whatever it might be? I really like that. It's good. I think, too, that if you're a, you're a pretty small startup at this point and you're not in the, the space of looking at um, – maybe adding on a, a co-founder or one of those other industries and looking to, uh, to diversify, but you're really just looking at your business from its basic startup stage. You can ask yourself, um, is, is my product or my service, does it need to be honed up so that I can add more value? Uh, do I need to, to do something a little bit different with that? Maybe uh, hit the market in a little bit different way. If that's great, what about my messaging? Am I getting it out there right? Is it, is it connecting with people? And if, if those things are great, just looking at the back end, how are my operations, my processes, or what's my finances look like? Do I have, do I have a handle on that? Do I need to level up? Do I need to get an accountant or sit down with somebody who can help me think through my numbers? And just by taking those basic, um, basic look at the basic pieces of your business, um, you've really got a plan for knowing what's working well and what might need a little bit of work. I'll add on to that and say, this is also a really good time to take a look at creatives in the industry. 
Um, there's tons of creatives who are looking for opportunity right now. When you think musicians, you think artists, etc., a lot of those industries are suffering right now. So this is a, a really good time to bring a creative in who is a think outside of the box type of person. And they are going to help and challenge you to begin to think and, and innovate your business uh, in a way that you could not have done on your own. That's true. Yeah, that's awesome. What's this uh, last question we have? Uh, what's the problem most businesses and entrepreneurs don't realize they have? Ooh. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I think. Uh, <laughs> That's a good question. But that, that comes with multiple answers. <laughs> I, I would say, like, again, I'm really early on in this uh, doing entrepreneurship on purpose. So Carvin will be five years old in April. Um, but just from even my research, people that I've talked through and then also in my own experience, I think one problem a lot of entrepreneurs and businesses have is not self auditing enough, not looking back at the processes and then not doing what it took to get you there. Um, to get to that next place. Cause sometimes we feel as if once we got the process written down, that's it, it's done. When it's like, no, times do change. Uh, even what Chris was just saying in regards to going back to your mission statement and making sure that that is still what your mission is. Um, just because it was written in stone at some time doesn't mean that that hasn't adjusted. As simple as the way something is being backed up for us when it comes to our footage that we shoot. There may be a simpler, faster way of doing it um, and if I'm not spending enough time doing research on the industry, figuring out, OK, is someone else doing this better? Uh, are we actually providing the value we're supposed to uh, provide? Then we'll become stagnant and we won't grow. So I would say just something I've noticed that, again, I'm experiencing. I've heard other professionals in the business consulting side of things talk about it. And then stuff I noticed from some of these other companies is the them being able to grow, them being able to look back and say, OK, are we actually doing what we're supposed to do? Is this process we wrote out a year ago, two years ago or 10 years ago actually still relevant for right now? Or do we need to be doing it in a different way? Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, an answer I would have for this question is um, if you are sitting in a virtual room with a bunch of people and everyone's uh, agreeing with you, uh, find a different room. Man. Like, Look for some people that are going to give you some different perspective, tell you that you're wrong, challenge you on things, poke holes mm -hmm. in your business or your idea. Um, that's, that's just another one of these opportunities now that we have all this time. And that should be able to help you hone that message and improve your business. He stole my thunder. I'm sorry, Chris. That's not your good. I was, I, was, I was going that direction, but that was good. That's what you say when somebody said something better than what you were going to say, right? Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah. I, I, guess good, the, grow. I guess the way I would shape it would be that um, a lot of business owners operate from the perspective of the business and not as many operating from the perspective of the customer. And so that's a problem they have when they're operating from that standpoint, they miss a lot of things that the customer needs. And so that hinders sales, they hinders growth, they hinders all of that. So um, until a business can pull them to shoot and actually put themselves in the customer's perspective, um, I think they will continue to have problems that, that hinder their growth and development. I think that's a really great idea. I, I could challenge, uh, I'm going to do this to myself, though, too. I'm, I'm going to challenge everybody listening to this with a business. Um, reach out to your um, five, ten best customers and ask them to sit on this Zoom call and be mm -hmm. like, hey, like, what's the insight? Like, you're my you're my best customers. How can I better serve you? Yeah, that's that's, that's a great idea. I'll um, I'll throw my two cents in and say I think one of the biggest challenges or biggest problems that entrepreneurs are dealing with as it relates to the times that we're in is simply believing the simple mm. belief mm -hmm. that my business will be okay when this passes over yeah um, the simple belief that we can figure this out is my, my family isn't going to lose the home my cars won't be repoed we're going to be okay in another month or two months although it may not look like it today we mm. will figure this out as to how we're going to get there uh to survive this and i think that it's, it's crucial at this time that as entrepreneurs you now learn to tap into that belief that this is going to pan out one way or another, you will figure out the solution um, to get us through because that's a part of being an entrepreneur. And, and my last two cents on that is that um, I believe that entrepreneurship mm -hmm. is the epitome of being a really good problem solver. Mm -hmm. So the better you become at problem solving, the better you will figure this out a little faster and quicker to get yourself to the end 
um, result that you're after. And and you'll realize in two months, this will be something you're laughing about as to how you panicked on that Tuesday that this thing was going bananas <laughs> and I didn't know what I was going to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll be fine. This is facts. Any final comments from anybody or any, or even anybody that's watching? Um, any final question or comment? Um, you've got about 10 more minutes here before we um, log off. Um, any final comments from you as, as guest speakers on here? I would, uh, I would say take advantage of us and hit our inboxes with your questions, your comments, your thoughts. We're all available to answer questions. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. don't hesitate to shoot us a message after this is over and say, hey, I need to bounce an idea. Here's what I'm thinking. Here's one of my challenges. Here's my struggle. And allow us to respond and maybe give you some input on how you can get through that to, again, survive the next few weeks. Thank you. Yeah. My last bit would be um, just to make sure that you're proud of who you are during this time, uh, not only just in the business side, but even family life, even in the relationships that you have. Make sure that you're going to look back right now and say, I'm proud of the way I handled what came at me. I communicated to the people I needed to. I checked up on people who I thought that I should. And I did. I gave back to whatever extent I could. Uh, and then also I built my business more than what it was going to be. But think about the times that this is going to be written in history. What is it that you're going to communicate to uh, the generations that won't actually live through this? This is just going to be a story at some point. This will just be a time in history. Uh, I know for me, like with, I hear a lot about segregation from people or hear about when uh, there were a lot more racial things going on, uh, extremely prevalent prevalent uh, everywhere. And so I just hear those as stories. I hear about what people were doing during that time. Um, but so make sure that you're going to be proud of what you are making your narrative be, because uh, even to go back to just sometimes it's hard for people to get past the fact that this isn't the end of everything. People are going to continue to move on. Stuff will happen. And it's not people who are that much smarter than any one of us. It's humans who are going to be moving on. Mm -hmm. We're all human. We're all going to get through this period. And so it's just those people who choose to do it. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes it can seem as if like, oh, I'm not doing anything magical or I'm not, you know, inventing the next iPhone or whatever. But it's like, it's the fact that you're doing whatever it is that you do. It's the fact that you are interested in this. Um, and then of course, if you feel like it's not that valuable, why is it not that valuable? Now you're asking those questions that are building you up um, to do that. So. Uh, in summary, I would just say make sure that you are proud of what it is that you're doing and spending your time. And if you're not, there's still time to adjust. This is still the beginning of all of this. Mm. I told myself I needed to make sure I was at the office every day still by 10 o'clock because that's what I would do whether COVID was going on or not. And so I'm here every day at 10 uh, putting in work and, of course, the client side of stuff, but then also cleaning my office. You know, um, the small things that have to be done. Our backyard is getting cleaned up so we can have more events back there uh, during the summer. So. Make sure you're proud of where you're spending time, uh, family side of things, relationship side of things, and also business. That's really good. That's awesome. Uh, like uh, similar to you, like um, I love that uh, that you're showing up to work every morning, same time. I uh, I started actually taking a commute. Like I, I walk around the building, <laughs> like every morning I take a commute to work. <laughs> and then, but it helps. It helps get me out of my brain. Um, so uh, one thing that I uh, I, I, I want to offer is that, you know, a lot of us as entrepreneurs, we're, we're so used to hearing the word no or not right now. Um, now is a great time where people are more inclined to say yes. Mm -hmm. And so if, if you have something that you're really looking for or you're really working towards and you got that no or maybe later, now is probably a good time to revisit that person or that organization and approach them again, maybe in a different way, because who knows what this has changed for them and where their positions are. I can think of uh, one client, uh, they were just, they were deathly afraid of calling the bank and saying, I need help. But as soon as they overcame that fear and made that phone call, they got their payments. They got their payments uh, forgiven for, for the next six months. Wow. It's not a program the bank is like advertising or doing because they're a bank, but you know, uh, it was getting over that fear, having the courage to ask, be insistent on the ask, and uh, and people are inclined to say yes. Just push for it, I guess. That's good. That's excellent. Uh, thank you guys so much for, for getting on here and, and being able to share with us. We really appreciate the wisdom that you've been able to drop the nuggets. Um, and all of you guys that signed on, we appreciate you guys coming in and listening and sharing what you're doing and what you're seeing out there. 
Um, as we've been saying, it's going to take it's going to take a village to get out of this. Um, we will continue to have these calls next week. Um, one of our calls I'd like us to do is maybe walk through how you can think through the process of uh, practically thinking about your bounce back. You know, assessing the problem for what it is, and then now, what does that look like as you try to create a solution? So, um, so before we go, again, I think I just thank you even for having us on the call. Because again, as we're talking about what these businesses can do, Spring GR as an organization is doing that where you all are evolving. You didn't wait a month into it to say, oh, actually we should still make sure we're providing value. You guys immediately jumped on it. And within a week of being in this thing where everybody's quarantined and can't be at work, we're here being able to still provide this community, giving people like I'm sitting here, you can ask my wife, I'm telling her all of these ideas that I'm getting during this time, but it feels great to be able to communicate that with some other entrepreneurs and business people and then have other conversations and stuff be done and let people just know like we're not in this by ourselves so i just want to thank you and the whole spring gr team for continuing to do what you all do two months ago but then even now in people's homes so it's really good. good it's our pleasure absolutely all right y'all take care have a good weekend have a good time with your family uh thank get you out there enjoy enjoy the sun rays it's, it's good to, it's a good thing that has to work against the virus so um, we'll talk to you guys next week all right have a good one all right. Bye. Bye. thank you